Thank you. Yeah, th thanks, Mike, for the introduction. And uh, I mean, we didn't agree uh, on, uh, on that word before we started, but uh, special thanks to, to Don. Uh, we had some. Uh, we already heard some some terms now. In all my OEF, we're relying on Dialto. You already mentioned the autonomous class. I couldn't have asked for a better introduction. Um, okay. So speaking about uh, the terms, the strategy of BMW, we have four major fields that we have identified to be crucial. Autonomous, connected, electric, and shared. In short, ACES. Let me walk you through those fields one by one. Let's have a look at autonomous cars. How does autonomy, uh, autonomous driving work? The in-car sensors only get you so far. But you, that's not sufficient. You always need to know what lies beyond where my sensors reach. Where am I laterally to my lane? And therefore, to answer some of these questions, we need a high definition map, a very, very accurate map going far beyond what current GPS guidance system do. We call that the HD map. When we speak about autonomous driving, what do we mean? What are the uh, layers or the levels of autonomy? The first one would be your classical car, where all the responsibility, all the control lies with the driver. As you see, we're going from level 0 to level 5. Um, level 1 would be, for example, where you have the longitudinal or transverse guide. Level 2, you add on top of level uh, 1, the traffic control. Level 3 is called awareness to take over, meaning the car can handle a lot of situation by itself and will only alert the driver when it can't do it anymore. Level 4, as you can see here, is called fully automated. There won't be any certain takeover requests. The vehicle will always be able to render itself into a safe situation, being that only for certain routes. Number 5, level 5, is autonomous, meaning there isn't even the possibility to steer the vehicle manually apart from for example, setting your next destination, setting an intermediate destination, or something like that. So you can see the transition of responsibility also, uh, thanks for mentioning that, is going from the driver to the car. What does that mean? If you have a vehicle that is able of fully autonomous driving, there is also the need for more connectivity. The higher the level of autonomy is, the higher the need for connectivity for the vehicle being enabled to communicate with its surroundings, being it other vehicles or being it the infrastructure, for example. Coming to the, to the next field, Vision Digital, it's mentioned. We always, or we, we often refer it to the digital representation of the car. You see in this image examples for that, car-to-x communication, communication between the car and the infrastructure, car-to-car -car communication, and um, the digital representation of the car allows us to offer multiple services on top of the physical services. Coming um, about that, um, we already covered the sensors, the HD map, as you can see here. Um, we already spoke about the car to x communication where the car connects to the infrastructure and the testing in a real-world environment is also very important. You see here, um, the topic where we follow up later, we don't do that alone. We have also some very important corporations. Next field, ACES, just a brief example for that, electric, 
in my opinion, is rather self-explanatory. But if you combine, for example, shared with electric, you see if only 15%, which is, uh, I think, a figure out of 2017, of the drive now fleet is electric, 2,500 tons of CO2 have been saved. Speaking about digitalization, as we come from the more technical topics of ACES, before we come into the last one, what does digitalization mean? How does it affect us? Studies say in the next 15 years there will be more changes than in the last 100 years. How does this affect us? For example, urbanization, where people are moving closer together. Changes in customer demand. New players in the mobility market. And value shifting, life is sharing. We already heard about the millennials earlier. It may not be that important to a younger generation to own a vehicle, but rather to use it when it's necessary, but only in that very moment. The ACE strategy doesn't come out of nothing. It's meant to face the challenges of the future, for example, by innovative vehicle concepts, the intelligent transport system, as one example for connected vehicles, autonomous driving, and mobility services and connectivity. What you see here is the um, expectation how the world of mobility looks like. We are currently thinking of this as today and going into the future. You have certain market shares. This one is public transport. This is individual transport, meaning you yourself driving your own car. In between is the on-demand business. Until a couple of years back, that has been classical taxi. And uh, as in 2018, 2019, ride-hailing services such as Uber or Lyft are quite common. Others are station-based car sharing or fleet, uh, sorry, free floating car sharing. Basically, if you look on that, it's still all on-demand mobility, where you do not own the vehicle yourself, but only use it. And uh, if you think of the new players we saw on the last slide, for example, Uber or Lyft, this is basically a taxi with a new sales channel. So what do we mean by that? Uh, the graph here. Expectation and, and um, studies show that this will get wider and wider while the amount of public transport or individual transport decrease. This is for example also um, due to the fact if you think of autonomous vehicles as part of the on-demand business it might be even more interesting when coming from taxis going to robo-taxis for you to use the on-demand mobility. You might recognize some of the players for the public transport and for the individual transport. But what is the intent of that players? Basically, we do not know where this line will exactly be, what is the percentage of who holds what share of the mobility market that's indicated by the question mark back there. So basically everyone is interested in moving the line to its own advantage and therefore increasing its market share. Another perspective on the diagram uh, we saw before is where we have the OEM, in that case car manufacturer, traditional basic um, business model. Again, you can see here, this one is decreasing. Where is one expecting a growth and a significant growth? Is in the business as car as a service and more uh, to that in mobility as a service. By adding digital features to one car, we create a smart car, which then enables car as a service or mobility as a service. What do those terms mean? Car as a service, at any point in time, I can access a car 
use it and don't need to take care of anything like, for example, viewing, washing, or things like that. Um, going uh, one step further would be mobility as a service. At any point in time, I get offered an appropriate suggestion out of different mobility options. So one would be, for example, ReachNow, which also offers ride-hailing services to some extent, which would be car sharing, um, or ride pooling, for example. You see here, connected and shared add up nicely. You have the connected cars and you have the possibility to share them. Let's take this one step even further and look at an actual example of car as a service in Spain. What we, um, what I mentioned earlier is reach now as a free floating car sharing where basically a company owns certain cars and lets you use them. This is a different approach. Mini sharing is where you want to um, let your mini, your car, um, get used by certain peers, as we call them, you know and you trust. The difference is, in that case, you want to, for example, reduce the total cost of ownership, or maybe you just want to avoid questions like when you um, ask your kids, where did you park the car? In a city as Barcelona, for example, it can be quite a big uh, question, or even, where did you leave the keys? So it's basically the same thing. It's a connected car, it's a smart car. You can use your app to open the car, to start the engine, you do not need the keys anymore. Let's have a look at how the user journey would look like. So we have here um, someone who owns a Mini. He's now inviting a person called Maria Sanchez to uh, allow her to use the car. He's inviting her, saying, this is the car, do you want to use it? Next step is, Maria is going in her app and basically saying, next Tuesday night or next Tuesday afternoon, I would like to use the car, is it free? So you use the calendar app to say, um, you see here from the, from the uh, little red dots, um, we'll repeat at some, uh, at some point, when uh, is the time and date where the car is available and if the time gets closer, you will also see where's the car parked. In the next step, you can locate the car, and as you see from the buttons down here, you can lock it, unlock it, and start the engine. This would only work for the time frame the peer has um, booked the car. After that, it's expected the car uh, coming coming back to its home area, and then. The owner, for example, can use it again, or another peer can use it. As I mentioned, now the car is locked, and you end your trip. Also, um, it provides the possibility to reimburse the owner to, in fact, reduce the total cost of ownership. What does that mean in the bigger picture? I meant to ask the question earlier, now I already showed this slide. What do you think is the percentage of time of a day where you actually use your car? According to uh, common studies, it's about 4%. If you now look at um, car sharing, it goes about 70%. So in 70% of the uh, time of the day, the car is actually used. So this gets really interesting as soon as we have autonomous cars out there because they can get used over and over and coming again to the service uh, uh, thought you can send them off to service themselves get refueling, get washed, get parked I don't care, I don't want to do this The general leaves on the floorboards <laughs> Sorry All the leaves on the floor, they vacuum all that out Yes, yes, uh, they go shopping as well they do. <laughs> and, and they empty the dishwasher <laughs> Again, this is an example of uh, autonomous and shared uh, can be connected. So, coming back to what Michael mentioned, uh, we are working in several initiatives, one of which is uh, the Biotur project, another one would be the Socrates project, ICT for CART, and Inframix. All of those um, cover certain aspects, but in general, aim 
to uh, see where can smart cities and smart cars connect. Um, Socrates, for example, has pilots running in Copenhagen, Amsterdam, Antwerp, and Munich. Uh, Inframix has test sites in Austria and in Spain, whereas the biotech pilot cities are Helsinki, Lyon, and Brussels. Let's have a look at those projects. So, Protest, for example, has those four aims. CEO of my own journey means it means to provide tools to support the individual customer to make its own decisions. To support its own decisions, sorry. Um, my own mobility habits. The question is to balance between what is good for the individual and good for society. Facilitating in that case means putting hardware, software and awkward in use and support and the customer option optimally and reliable. Joint effort in that case means rewarding the customer for contribution which is to improve society. It means to create a win-win situation because I guess every one of you would agree that if there isn't a win-win situation or a win situation for the road users, for the authorities or for the service providers, it's hard to get them on board. So let's have a look at one of the pilots, how, one, how the uh, people of Socrates try to achieve that. This is the pilot in Antwerp. You see the, the map of Antwerp? And um, this is a schematic of the map. Basically, Antwerp has, within the major road work, um, two tunnels which allows you to cross the river. The, sorry, I have to look that up so I don't say anything wrong. The northern tunnel is fee-based, where else the southern tunnel is toll-free. The intention of the road authority is to spread the traffic um, if there is an accident, accident in the um, free tunnel. As you can imagine, most of the people are trying to use the toll free tunnel whenever possible. So what they are now doing is providing a, a schema or a, a traffic management system. So for example, if in the um, toll free tunnel there is an accident, that if there are people who would only go um, in the right direction, who would want to release uh, the amount of traffic going to that tunnel, we offer them a toll reduction or even a toll-free passage of the other tunnel to uh, reduce the amount of traffic going into that area. This uh, is still in, in concept, this isn't live yet, it's planned to be done in 2019. But uh, they are looking into several different approaches, sending information directly to the car, looking uh, at information sent to the uh, mobiles, as well as looking on how the amounts would look like to uh, enable the, the right customers uh, to, to um, adjust their journey. And on the other hand, also keeping in mind how the uh, business model would look like for the road authority so they don't lose too much money. And the next project is Biotop. This is the one I'm personally involved. It has the goals to create an ecosystem for connected smart objects, the communication via open standards, as well as breaking up vertical silos. The approaches are to create a system of systems, using everything as a service, and validate that through smart city pilots. This is a picture of a smart city within Biotope. You have several use cases, for example, the smart waste management, the safety around schools, we also have the smart electric cars. If you hear that use cases, uh, the first assumption would be they are totally separate. You have a vertical silo for each of the use cases, one for smart electric cars, for example, and one for smart waste management, and another one for smart building. The idea 
of Biotope in general is to not create those vertical silos, but going via open standards, open um, vocabulary to allow communication between those silos, or oh, not silos, better to be said, um, to make use of the data for another use case. Is that Brussels or Lille? Um, <laughs> uh, the, uh, we have the, for example, the, the smart electric vehicle with the um, uh, with the specific for electric would be Helsinki. Uh, Brussels would be, for example, safety around schools, but also smart parking. Yes. Lyon would be, for example, smart waste management. So these are three different business ecosystems. Is there any uh, commonality between the vocabulary between the three, or any reuse? Um, I know there's line of differences, but. But is there, is there any reuse between the three cities? Or when you go into those cities as a project lead, does it look like three, three vastly different use cases? Is it okay if I answer that uh, yeah. question uh, about five slides later? Okay. Okay. <laughs> then I, I, I hope um, uh, it, will be, it will be more clear. So let's have a look at the smart mobility use case, as you might have guessed, is uh, the one BMW is taking the, the most interest in. We have. Um, Five proof of concepts. One is preconditioning um, and driver identification is the second one. Both of them. We are looking specifically into context awareness, real-time traffic information. Gets the interlink between the uh, use cases which I will mention, uh, which I've already mentioned. Whereas smart parking and charging, we are specifically looking into standardization. This is a very high level architecture um, where you have uh, the uh, certain systems that work within Biotope. So, for example, you have Parking Energy, which is using an OMI node to distribute its chargers or the information about its chargers in the IoT. You, on the other hand, have um, an OMI node with the sensor, which is another partner in the Biotech consortium, which is distributing parking information, for example, for Lyon or for Brussels. So what we do uh, from the from the CAS perspective, we query a system which is another I, um, OMI node, technically speaking, which is called IoT BNB. It's a service catalog. So basically, if you're looking for a certain set of information, being it parking or charging, you just query for that information, saying I'm looking for parking information, I'm looking for charging information for that geo coordinates, and then the system will return you on my nodes that have registered parking or charging information for that position. What's the query mechanism? Do you know? What's the, how, how, how was it queried? Um, it's basically an OEF message. Okay. What is meant by those clouds, uh, which you unfortunately can't see, uh, for example, <coughs> parking energy again. You have, physically speaking, um, charging poles, which are connected to a backend, which allows booking them, reserving them, and um, well, basically allows the power to flow or to stop the, the power flow. This is a proprietary island. We do not interfere with that uh, company's business of how they connect the uh, charging poles to their, um, to their backend. What we do in Biotope is keeping the uh, interfaces open, so the information about the charging poles is available, is using Mobivoc as a vocabulary, for example, and is transporting that information via Mobivoc or ODF. The idea, uh, I think some of you heard already the uh, presentation and saw the, the picture of the hourglass, uh, carry friendly is usually using for that. So the idea is that within your domain or within your application you can choose from all the variety of technologies and standards that is there, but when it comes to the interface, it's to be kept very narrow to enable a broad um, interoperability. So Biotop basically doesn't say you do not need to make everything public to participate, but only provide the information that might be useful to other customers in an open standard. Again, that slide might uh, answer to your question you, you had earlier. We have the parking data from the uh, several, uh, from the several cities, um, which is often in proprietary uh, formats, which we use open standards to distribute them 
and which allows us, for example, that we display the parking data in the car and on the other hand have a mobile app for Android, uh, which was developed by Alta University, for example, uh, to work on the very same set of data um, that the car is operating. The use case of Lyon would be the smart waste management. What they did, you have those bottle banks over here being equipped with those tiny IoT devices. Those uh, devices basically measure how full the bottle bank is and therefore optimize when um, the bottle bank is to be emptied. So the question you might now have is, how is that connected to smart mobility? How, uh, what would a BMW driver, for example, be interesting, interested in how full a bottle bag is? The idea is that when they send out those trucks to empty the bottle bag, they know the route in advance, they are able to plan a very efficient route and only empty the full bottle bags, but you do not want to be stuck behind one of those waste trucks. Therefore, the information again is published in OMI or YET, for example, and therefore can be used to optimize the route and take away most of the traffic from where the uh, uh, bottle bank uh, is emptied and therefore not causing any uh, greater delays. Then, uh, the next slide, uh, which is about uh, smart home. This one does not have to be necessarily open because, for example, you would not want uh, the information about your smart home uh, available publicly on the internet. Right. So in this case, this uh, Finnish company uh, in their event, the idea is that they provide all the sensors that are going to the home, or is the homeowner provide the sensors? And someone puts it together. Who provides all this, the sensor type, the bill of materials that goes in the home? In, in our case, it's uh, element, for example. Yes. Um, but the idea is that the, the open standard uh, to be used there, we can also supplement that with sensors from another company. Cool. So again, we have here a, a use case that is meant to show um, how can communication be done efficiently and how can uh, the user benefit from communication crossing the borders between different silos. Um, Think of the user perspective. On the one hand, I have a smart home, and on the other hand, in front of that smart home, there is a smart car parked. Usually, I uh, again picturing the scene in uh, Finland, for example, in winter. Um, the smart home does know I uh, will now very soon leave my house. Couldn't it just tell the smart car? to already warm up, so when I enter the car, it's comfortable. Unfortunately, uh, in a 2018 scenario, before Biato, the two devices are called smart, but are too dumb to talk to each other. This is one of the situations we want to resolve with Biato, and we have an example um, that I will show you in a short video of how the Helsinki use case in general works. Um, going into detail about smart park, uh, smart charging in that case, and about the smart home.
refuses to find charging for his electric vehicle. He receives a list of charging spots suitable for his car near his destination. He selects a spot provided by Parking Energy and enjoys the ride towards his destination. Now Robert arrives and needs to charge his car. He has already selected his charging spot, so he only needs to enable charging.
and then interpreting it for the car. But in an ideal world, which is not that far away, hopefully, it would be that you have a digital communication from the infrastructure to say the sign which is uh, displayed for the um, regular drivers is also broadcasted digitally and therefore closing that gap. Same for tolls, I think. Sorry? Same for tolls. Yes, for the tolls. Some cars don't need the signs, road signs. Yeah, that's it. Oh, my car is road signs. Yeah, they do that by the camera, but the um, idea would be to have a direct digital connection instead of that image recognition, for example, for visibility reasons that might be, might be better. Um, yeah, I'm sorry, I was... Well, we've got about five minutes prior to the break, so I can leave it up to the speaker. Do you prefer to open up to questions, or do you want to continue with some more of the content that you have? I'm trying to finish within two minutes, and then we okay. still have some, some time. So this is just a, a introduction about the, uh, the plant test sites, as I mentioned, in Spain and in Austria. Um, they are meant to use real vehicles and real infrastructure to test it. Um, and just to give you a few figures, so for example, the test site in Spain is a 20 kilometer four lane carriageway with intersections, with tunnels, and with about 30,000 uh, cars per day. Expected costs to cover 20 kilometers of a uh, motorway is about 500,000 euro um, for the digital infrastructure. The certain inframix use cases would be, for example, to calculate when it's beneficial to uh, start uh, an own lane for autonomous cars. So, for example, you can reduce the distance grammatically between the cars if it's only um, them, because they just have a faster reaction if you do not mix them with uh, human drivers. But on the other hand, for example, if you would use the rightmost lane, how do you do about the exits? And is there a better uh, way than just saying if I have three lanes, uh, maybe we use uh, if you have 33% of the autonomous vehicles, then it is beneficial. So the question is like that. On the other hand, how do you handle roadwork zones? Because, of course, if you have a um, uh, car saying uh, autonomy level four, it could handle a roadwork zone, for example. Or if it couldn't, it just would stop before, and that's what you want to avoid. That you kind of have a car going the maximum allowed speed here, and then at this situation, um, suddenly doesn't know what to do and therefore stops immediately. So it would be beneficial to tell the car, say, five minutes in advance, and therefore notify the driver, hey, in five minutes you will have to take over. And one other thing is how to handle bottlenecks which you do implicitly, if you drive the car, you might speed up or you might slowly decrease the um, speed. Um, this is a thing autonomous cars yet have to learn. And the question is also important for the car. Uh, that's the classification scheme I mentioned earlier. How many uh, or how much support I can expect from the infrastructure. So therefore, um, just closing with a, a quote. Future mobility will be autonomous, connected, emission-free and shared, and will be geared to meeting the individual needs of each and every single customer. Thank you. So thank you very much, Florian, for giving us all a, a crash course into autonomous vehicles and the, and the concerns and considerations. Um, we've now got a couple minutes left over for questions, so I know there's definitely um, Unless you're an expert in this area, I imagine you have to come on a question, so um, please feel free. I'll go. So, uh, two things uh, car to car communications and also accident modeling. Could you just comment on those? The car to car, vehicle to vehicle, and then accidents. Um, you mean car to car communication to uh, communicate an accident, for example? Well, the, the, uh, the intention of a vehicle or the finding of a hole on the pavement or the obstruction, or the fact that a truck is sliding. Um, is there been any work by the end of that could communicate with either other manufacturers within the company so that those messages get shared with other vehicles that are autonomous or nearly so? Um, there, there certainly is, but um, within the, the projects mentioned here, it's more about the car to X communication than the car to car communication. Yes. Okay, that answers that. Now, what is an accident? 
So when there's an axle in the motorway, how does that, how does that get communicated? There, with, with the permits, they are still at the very beginning, as they are with the autonomous cars, uh, unfortunately. Gotcha. Um, but uh, the, the idea basically would be, as I, as I mentioned earlier, um, to give an early warning to the car, for example, that a lane is close to uh, due to an accident. Okay, thank you. Great talk. Will Intermix use OMI ODF as well, or do you know yet? Uh, I don't know yet. So I'm, uh, I'm not uh, personally part of that, that project, but um, for example, what we've done quite uh, successfully is uh, suggesting, because that's uh, the only thing we can do, uh, is about uh, OMI ODF, and especially MobiVoc, to the other projects. We, we have happily used that in Biotope, but we uh, already suggested that to the ICT for CART, which is a, a national project, and as well to, to SOAP protest, which is, is another European project. Okay. 